I didn't know that much about immigration, only the fact that a lot of people are affected by it. A lot of people came to my school um, that immigrated from their countries, and I knew that it was tearing families apart. I feel like there's a lot that I don't know about. <laughs> I only knew about Donald Trump and his plans to ban immigrants from the country by building a wall. But I really didn't, you know, think immigration was such a big deal until this year. There's a lot of different viewpoints on immigration. Well, if we're going to hold ourselves out as, as a great country and we're going to actually talk about the American dream, it's going to attract a lot of people. And I think that's important. And the more people we get, the more cultural it is. And, and that helps everybody. Any country that has uh, sovereignty, that sovereignty needs to be uh, protected. If it's not protected, then the country becomes something that it shouldn't be, which is a, an unsovereign nation, unprotected from mass illegal immigration. Uh, but if the law in the book says that there's a separation between two countries, we need to establish that separation. We know that immigrants contribute to the economic strength. We know right now that if we were to achieve comprehensive immigration reform that would fully allow all those documented and undocumented immigrants uh, to be able to fully participate in our economy, it would add a trillion dollars over the next decade and a half. A lot of people think it's because of the economy, because people's wages haven't been growing very fast, people are angry at immigrants for competing for jobs. But that actually is not well supported by the research that we have. Actually, the backlash against immigration is less about jobs and wages, it's more about a sense of national identity and control over national borders. Uh, it, it can cause the, 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 the economy, essentially, uh, to and the, and the laws of our country to be violated. And so once the laws of our country are violated, then who are we as a nation? Do we have laws? Or do the laws matter? I haven't been in a another situation like that before where people were that convicted with their beliefs because I was, I've just stayed in the city my whole life and not a lot of that stuff happened before until the DNC came in and I got to see it firsthand for the first time. So that was really enlightening. I got to see from their point of view like this is their cause and they're trying to like get the word out because a lot of people like me didn't really understand how important it was and how much it was affecting people. People who were out there protesting, they were like really passionate about what they were protesting for. The feeling of being like where the action is when we are interviewing people and at the protest there's just this atmosphere where everyone's just full of energy and just determined to stand up for what they believe in. And I think that was one of the best experiences in this whole program. We're really here to send a strong message to um, the Democrat Party that they really need to be better on these policies, that they need to stop deporting people. And I really think we're not moving this city forward for the next generation unless we are here together with each other on all battles for justice. I thought, you know, immigrants just came here freely. I didn't know that the process took as long as it did. It's very hard for people to come to this country. I'm a firm believer in legal immigration. Immigration where people follow the rules, they go through uh, the process to come to our country legally. You can do that via visa, you can do that via work permit, you can do that through a green card, there's a number of different ways you can do that and ultimately if you want to become a citizen there's a process for that. But jumping in line to come in front of everybody else who does that process legally is not fair to those people who take the time to do that legally. For those who have been undocumented, um, uh, make sure that there's no criminal history or record. For us what's most important that there be a concrete path uh, that is not take generations or decades for them to become citizens. The big, biggest barrier to us was the leadership in the House that refused to take up a bipartisan Senate approved bill. So that's why we need to make sure that uh, from a, a political standpoint, 
uh, those of us who believe in a comprehensive immigration reform really hold those elected leaders accountable. President Obama, during his presidency, there was more deportations than before. And I didn't know that beforehand until we found out in one of the interviews. This is the kind of thing that's separating families. And Obama, he's escalated it. I also um, was shocked when I found out about Hillary Clinton and her influence in Honduras. For those of you who may not know, Berta Cáceres was a human rights activist, an indigenous woman who tried to fight for her land and was assassinated under, under Hillary Clinton's watch. Um, so we're here for Justicia para Berta, or Justice for Berta. It all started with U.S. Um, influence and uh, presence in my country. It is really hard in other countries, and a lot of war is going on. They're not out to get us. They're running from people who are out to get them. There's no question that our community is, is facing a challenge right now. As communities of color, communities that can be painted with that broad brush and somehow now are being perceived as a threat to this country, we need to absolutely make sure that our narrative does not get hijacked. If one is experiencing that kind of uh, anxiety and fear at the thought of strangers, at the thought of immigrants, at the thought of uh, the challenges ahead, I invite people to just take a deep breath. Like, take a deep breath, know they're going to be okay, to work with all their neighbors and to be open, you know, sit down and have a meal with someone you disagree with, and, um, and then we need to all work through this together. I think that the immigrants are just people who want to make a living, just like anybody else. We are making great sacrifices and working very hard to create a better future for our families that is integrally tied to the future of this country. We need to tell our stories, and certainly those of us who are here as citizens or with legal status, we can be advocates for those who are undocumented, but I would argue that the undocumented and many of the youth uh, segment and component of the undocumented have shown great courage because despite being undocumented, they have owned who they are. I'm a 28-year-old undocumented transgender woman uh, in this country. There's 11.2 million undocumented immigrants, undocumented dreamers. That's larger than the population size of Hungary and Czech Republic in Europe and Tunisia in Northern Africa. So we are not talking about a few. We're not talking about a hundred. We're talking about millions of people. It's uh, very enriching to know people from different continents and different cultures. Uh, it opens your mind. It opens your comprehension. That diversity is a strength for this country. It's just not fair to try to blame all immigrants for our problems when we have a long history of problems. I really didn't believe like the stereotype that immigrants raise violence in the United States, but actually doing research you realize that immigrants are regular people, just like me and you. Immigration has a lot of issues you should view it as it affects you because we're all in this together.